Hey gang, Tim here at Core Electronics, and this is a geophone. It's an ultra sensitive microphone for the ground, capable of picking up light footsteps from many meters away. They are utilized around the world, mainly for studying earthquakes, mapping subsurface geology, and in early warning safety devices. Today, we set one up with a Raspberry Pi single bore computer, and we're gonna need an analog to digital converter to do it. If you were to pull apart this SM24 geophone, you are going to see a spring-mounted coiled up wire mass that is free to move up and down within the field of a case-mounted permanent magnet. The active element of this device is that hanging wire coil mass. When the ground shakes, like say due to an earthquake, the spring-mounted mass has an inertia and wants to remain still. So as the earth moves up and down, the magnet displaces freely around the spring-mounted wire mass. This displacement creates a changing magnetic field, which in turn produces measurable electrical voltages in the coiled wire. As the voltages are the result of natural phenomenon, it is a truly pure analog signal. So we will need an analog to digital converter like this Adafruit 16-bit ADS1115. This is going to be the translator between these two systems, reading the data from the geophone and converting it into a format that the Raspberry Pi can then understand. These chips operate at 3.3 volts and the sampling rate can be set anywhere to eight to 860 samples per second. To learn a whole bunch about analog and digital signals in the ecosystem of electronics, hit up our guide of the same name down in the description. On the table before me is everything you need to set up your Raspberry Pi to read data from an analog signal produced by a Geophone SM24. Naturally, you're gonna need a Geophone SM24 and a Raspberry Pi. We are using a Raspberry Pi 4 Model B 2 gigabyte. The Adafruit ADS1115 ADC board is also going to be needed and you're going to need to solder a line of headers onto it as well. You're also going to need some odds and ends like these three one kilo ohm resistors. You're going to want some extra DuPont jumper cables and a breadboard. You will also need everything to run the Raspberry Pi as a desktop computer. That means you're going to need a micro SD card flashed with the latest Raspberry Pi OS and a micro HDMI to HDMI cord to connect the system to a monitor. You're also gonna want a Raspberry Pi power supply, mouse, and keyboard. We will now build up the hardware. Start by plugging in all the connections to your Raspberry Pi 4 Model B as you would a desktop computer. Check the description for a guide if you need a hand doing this. Don't plug in the power through USB-C just yet. Now you're going to need to solder headers onto the ADS1115 board. And solder on some wire connections to the top of that Geophone SM24 if you haven't done so already. This Geophone comes with a little PCB board on top, which makes soldering to the top of it significantly easier. Now let's take a look at the schematic. This is exactly what we're gonna replicate here. As you can see, the Raspberry Pi is connected to the ADS1115 board through the GPIO pins. There are four connections which I will plug in now. The first is the red one. To deliver 3.3 volts VDD, that's voltage drain drain, to the ADC. The black wire is to provide ground connection between both boards. The last two are required for I squared C connection. They are the serial clock named SCL and the serial data named SDA. The orange wire is going to be the SCL and connects like so.
The purple wire is the SDA and connects this way. The ADC can be supplied voltage from the Raspberry Pi itself as I do here, but it must be the 3.3 volt connection. If you connect it up to the five volts from the Raspberry Pi, it's gonna brick the Adafruit ADC board. Now turning attention to the geophone side. We will connect up its two outputs to a breadboard. As I set up the resistors near the Geophone SM24, I'll explain their purposes. The one kilowatt resistor in the middle between here and here is a calibration resistor used in accordance with the data sheet. This one kilo ohm resistor will flatten the response curve of the Geophone. These two other one kilo ohm resistors leading towards the ADC board are for current limiting. In a situation where the output voltage from the geophone is significantly greater than the maximum input voltage of the ADC, these resistors are gonna protect our system. Knowing this, we'll now connect up the two resistor ends of the AO and A1 of the ADC board with some jumper cables. When everything has been connected up and your setup looks a lot like this, you can then put power into your system. With power to the system and the new first boot up wizard complete, you're gonna be welcomed by the Raspberry Pi desktop. Now this Adafruit ADC requires I squared C communication to work. By default on Raspberry Pi OS, this communication method is turned off. So the first step is to turn it on. To do this, we're gonna open up the Raspberry Pi configuration menu, found using the top left menu and scrolling over preferences. And then we're gonna enable the I squared connections found under the interfaces tab. After enabling, reset the Raspberry Pi to lock in the changes. Now with your system rebooted and connected to the internet, open up a new terminal window by pressing the black button on the top left of the screen. Utilizing this terminal window will enable us to download from the internet the exact Python packages that we require. So type and enter the following lines into the terminal to get all the packages that you'll need. You can also copy and paste them from the full written up article linked down in the description like I'm doing right here. If ever prompted, type and enter Y to continue installations. With that last line complete, we have fully set up our Raspberry Pi single board computer to work with the Geophone SM24 and the ADS1115 board. I have created some example codes that you can find and download at the bottom of the full written up article. Link to it in the description. These files will be in a zip folder. Just extract the contents of it to wherever you would like. The desktop is a perfectly good place to do so. Right click and open any of these files with Thony IDE to see how I wrote them. Thony IDE is just a Python interpreter software and you can use whichever software you would prefer. Let's start by opening up the differential graph display.py. With it open, let's press the green button. As soon as you press it, it's gonna show the live output of the geophone plotted to a constantly updating graph. When I lightly tap the corners of the table, the geophone will register it and the graph will respond in turn. Very sweet. This data is also recorded to the shell and it even picks up handwriting. The 
the y-axis are the millivolts coming out of our geophone as determined by the ADC board. The readings constantly come in at around 20 each second. Taking a quick dive into the script, the first two lines are the libraries needed to plot data. After that, it's time and the package needed to run the ADC. We then create an ADC instance right here. This points the system to the I squared C address that we have our ADC attached to. We then choose a gain for our system. I utilized a gain of 16, the max that this ADC board can do. This way you can really see how sensitive the geophone is. Just as an example, if you were to have this in the boot of your car, picking up the vibrations as you drive along, you may not need such an extreme sensitivity and a lower gain value would be better. We will also use the voltage range that each gain level targets to adjust our graph scaling later in the script. Everything below this really has to do with creating the constantly updating graph, except for this section down here. This line here pulls data from the ADC each loop. The next lines convert this value to a millivolts value. Then we print them to the shell and the next line plots them on the graph. The next script worth looking at is differential data collect gain dot py. When you run this script, the ADC very quickly will sample the geophone a hundred times. The Raspberry Pi will then capture those pieces of information and save them in a CSV file named geophone underscore data dot CSV. If this file is not already created, it's gonna create it. As you can see, each new data point has been separated by a new line. Be aware that each time you run this script, it's gonna rewrite that CSV file. It will also tell you exactly how long it took to complete and print that time in seconds to the shell. If you run it as is, you're gonna receive those 100 samples within around a second. Allow me to demonstrate. And it only took 0.96 of a second to do so. That is a lot of data points really quick. Since we're already in the script, let's take a dive into it further. Initialization and data retrieval is the same as before. Here is the sample number variable, which we will use in conjunction with the loop so we can get our 100 data points. The next line lets the script create, open and write the CSV file. We also have some extra variables just so we can keep track of how long it took to receive those 100 points of data. Then simply we jump into the for loop. This line right here captures that value coming out of the ADC. Then if we go down a little bit further, this line right here is the one that writes those millivolts into our CSV file. If you wanted to record seismic data over an entire 24 hour period, you can do so with this script. You just need to make the following adjustment. Comment out this for loop here, and then uncomment this and this. This line will take the time it is currently, and then only once 24 hours have passed, will the script stop looping. I'll start it running right now. Then when you have sufficient data or you have something that you really want to graphically observe, we can quickly take that CSV file and plot it in Excel. Finally, I wanted to control a camera based on the vibrations around me. The idea is that when I walk by the Raspberry Pi, the geophone will pick it up and trigger a photo to be taken of me. To do this, I'm gonna to need to attach this camera to the CSI port on the Raspberry Pi. Check the description for a guide all about setting up cameras if you need. Let's take a look at the script called footsteps camera geophone.py. It's gonna look very similar to the previous ones, except we're also importing the OS functionality. When you scroll down, you can see that the while loop is gonna continue forever. Then we gather the data in the same way as before inside this loop there is also an if statement inside this loop. This is the threshold. If the geophone picks up a millivolt data point larger or smaller than these two values here, then the camera is gonna be activated by this line. This os.system pseudo libcamera still dash dash date time 
is just a way of taking a photograph. This is the reason why we needed to import OS at the beginning. The camera is going to auto adjust and take a photograph of whatever happens to be in front of it. Then the system will revert back to vibration listening. If this threshold is too sensitive for your application, simply adjust these values here. Keep in mind that I'm making it hard for the geophone as it's on a hard wooden table and I'm walking around on carpet. Normally geophones are installed directly against hard ground. So let's run and test it now. We'll stop the script running and let's go take a look at that photo that it got of me. You're going to find the photos in the same place as the scripts and the photos are going to be named with the current date and time. So there's no concern of overriding them. I'm pretty sure this is the one that got me. Nice. This opens up an interesting world of control where intelligent devices can be set up behind walls completely out of the line of sight. Say you are walking through your house at night your system could know exactly where you are and turn on your lights automatically, illuminating the path as you go. Or you could utilize it as a secret method of tracking how many people are walking past a certain location. Hopefully this toolkit of knowledge on both ADCs and geophones will serve you well. If you have any questions, write me a message down below. We are full-time makers and we're here to help. So with my geophone bouncing along just how it should, until next time, Stay cozy.